Hi everybody, I'm the Reluctant Reviewer and I was trying to think of something else to do a video on that is akin to my dolls or my toy collection. So I was hunting around, trying to dust things, trying to pick another room to dust, um, and thought about an, another side note collection that I have are books that involve dolls or toys. So I thought we'd do a little reader's advisory here, uh, and I put some books out, and we'll see if we talk about a few of them. Um, I didn't put the regulars like Corduroy and Raggedy Ann and Andy, or things that are like uh, um, every single Barbie book out there, you know, that shows a Barbie doll or a simulation of a Barbie doll or illustration. Um, just a few other ones, um, a few that you know probably, and some that you probably don't know. So um, let's see, where can I start this? I'm gonna pick one up and then I'm gonna talk about it and then we're gonna just put it down to the side. But it might be something that maybe, well, when we can go back out again and go to stores uh, that you can find, or maybe you can find something online that if it interests you. So let's see what do we have here first. Ah, this is Toys Meet Snow. Um, I love picture books, and I love picture books about toys or dolls, things that come alive in the middle of the night. Um, this one is about the toys meeting snow, and it has some stuffed animals that, and balls and all sorts of toys, and of course it's about them wanting to know about the world which those are always good books. That's, that's like corduroy, um, you know, and it's a basic premise, which I like. So I like that. Now my main type of book that I like, I like, um, I like uh, fantasy. I also like books about ghosts. So those are my two real genres, but then I also like books that have dolls in them or uh, toys. So that's Toys Meet Snow, which is a Paul Zelensky book, and Emily Jenkins. Okay, let's see if I pick one out here. This one you probably have heard of before. This is William's Doll. It's about a little boy who has a doll and he loves it very much and everybody keeps trying to get him to play sports or be involved in other so-called boy activities, but he just wants to take care of his doll. It was a a really, you know, did this win an award? I'm not sure if it won an award or not. Uh, it's by Charlotte Zolito, and it's a really good book about a child that loves their doll. All right, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. let's do this one. This is the Hand Me Down doll. It's by Stephen Kroll, and it shows a doll, and it's kind of like a prairie time. Kind of looks like an American Girl doll when you look at it. And it is about a beautiful doll with long dark curls and a velvet coat has been passed from owner to owner. Keep me and love me and give me a name, she begs, but no one seems to hear her. Then one day she meets a little girl and her luck changes. So that's a cute book. Take one from all the way over here. Ah, this is a series of books. It's called The 68 Rooms. Now this is for an older child and definitely me. I enjoyed this book. It is based on the Thorn Rooms, which are in the Art Institute, which is in Chicago. So this is kind of a local place that I have seen these rooms, and it's a bunch of like just little dollhouse rooms, different periods of time, and they're all stacked up in these cute little cubby holes where you can see them, and this is about a mystery that is, involves those rooms. It involves somebody being able to get very, very tiny and walk through those rooms. Um, I love the series. I just, this is kind of a mystery, but still fantasy too, so I enjoyed it. And it's by Marianne Malone. I think there are five books, maybe? I can't remember. I didn't grab them all off the shelf. But this is the first one, The 68 Rooms. Unlock the Magic of the Thorn Rooms. Here's one, The Very Best Doll. This is about a little girl that 
has a doll, kind of like a rag doll maybe, and uh, she's had her forever. And then she has a birthday and she gets a fancy doll that you can go fix her hair. And, and um, in the end, and she's got a wardrobe too, the, the new doll. In the end, she really wants her old doll to be with her new doll so that they're together. So it's a cute little story. This is the new doll and that's the old doll. When You're Not Looking. This is a story time counting book and it has lovely illustrations in it. Teddy bears. I used to get these when um, they weren't in circulation anymore. Oops, oops, where's the other toys? Over here. There's a rocking horse that talks. There's a Raggedy Ann type doll, a cloth doll. There's all the toys in the room. I love the illustrations. A, a surreal toy room. I love it. This is a book called The Doll's Nose. It's Arabic. So it has, it's bilingual on each page. And it's by the little girl and her doll. The doll has a very long nose. And it changes. So she has a different nose each time she plays with it. It's a cute little book. I like that it's bilingual. Here's another book. This one is by Cynthia Ryland, uh, The Ticky Tacky Doll. Gotta love a cover like that. It's, it's a pretty interesting co cover on it. Starting school can sometimes be hard, especially when your best friend can't be by your side. And that would be her dolly, who is always at her side. And now she's going to school and she's lonely without her. Kind of a basic premise. That's all about the illustrations. Betty Wren Wright. How many people read these books? Uh, a lot of mystery books. This one is called The Dollhouse Murders, and obviously I have it in my collection because it's a dollhouse. It's a really cool story. Here's one. It's by Eve Bunting. This is a little different. This is called Doll Baby, but it's about a young girl who remembers her doll and she still has her doll, and she ends up being a young mom and realizes that having a real baby isn't quite the same as having her doll that she still has. But it's, 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 it's pretty. I love the illustrations. Thought provoking. Uh, this one is a advanced reading copy book. I don't have the uh, whole original one. It's called The Adventures of Minnie by Melody Benson Rosales. So you can see there's a doll and there's a bear and it's a set of series. A little brown rag doll, and from the moment Hester sees it, she feels something warm and familiar. Her grandmother says the doll is special, so Hester knows it must have a special name. And it's kind of like an American Girl kind of little series. Um, the lady that did this, she did write for, um, for Addie's books. So it's kind of a cute little story. Gotta find a way to keep it together. Over here we have Tub People's Christmas. Now there's a first book called Tub People and it's about the bathroom toys, the little tub people that's, that you play with and one gets lost. Uh, I couldn't find my regular tub people but this one is in addition to it for Christmas. I like the little people books. Uh, this one, we know Winnie the Pooh is a toy. And if you look at this book, um, it's, this is an old one. I've had this for a long time. It was $1.95 when it came out. So it's an oldie but a goodie about Pooh Bear and all his friends. And I'm sure you've read that before. Let's see what's over here. Velveteen Rabbit, another classic. This one, I think it had the deluxe illustrations. I have a lot of advanced reading copies, and those don't always have pictures in them, but uh, some of them I was able to get and just order through the library. There was a once a velveteen rabbit, and in the beginning he was really splendid. So this one is the original story and illustrations as they appeared in 1922. Okay, this one. A doll for Marie. 
In the city of Paris there lived a doll who sighed from morning to night. She sits in an antique shop surrounded by old vases and teapots and she's lonely. She longs for a little girl to play with. This is by Louise Fatillo. It's cute. Um, more black and white illustrations, but it's kind of like along the line of Madeline when the illustrations are. Uh, this one's not per se toys, but it's kind of like an amusement park. So when you see those bigger than life kind of things, to me, I think that's pretty cool. So I could see those being in a nursery somewhere. This is Ticket to Ride, Tickets to Ride an Alphabetic Amusement by Mark Rogalski. And I just love the pictures in it. Oh, I love that. The ducky is so cool. Big eyes. Oh, so many cool rides. So it's really neat for illustrations. If you like art books. Uh, this one, well, these three. I'm sure everybody knows these. The Lonely Doll by Dara Wright. Um, this is another set of them. I have a gift from the Lonely Doll and Edith and Mr. Bear. I need the other ones. These are really cool and it's only because I love the illustration inside because it looks like it's a lunchie. And she's got the bear and it's all done as pictures and I think, oh, why can't I just make a book like that? You know, a really cool one like that with the just illustrations of the doll and her friends. But I love these books. Um, some people say occasionally that um, Bear is a little mean, that he spanks her in the book when she's bad. Sometimes, usually she gets into trouble and Bear is not happy with her and then she wants Mr. Bear to like her again so she becomes a good girl. What else do we have? This is The Dollhouse Fairy by Jane Ray. What would you do if you discovered a real fairy living in your dollhouse? When Rosie's father gets sick and has to go to the hospital, Rosie is surprised to discover a fairy named Thistle inside her dollhouse. Thistle has hurt her wings, so Rosie takes care of her while she heals. But Thistle is full of fun and mischief. So, it's about a dollhouse. We love our dollhouses. And a fairy, a mischievous fairy. The Richest Doll in the World by Raleigh M. Robertus. It's only been a few months since Emily's parents died. Now living with her grandmother, Emily has to stay with a babysitter on Christmas Eve while Grandma Rose cleans house for Mrs. Begley, an old lady who lives in a mansion all by herself, except for her antique doll, Delilah. Delilah wears fancy gowns and jewelry and has her own little rooms and garden. And Emily decides that tonight she will finally see the richest doll in the world. Um, this is all text, you know, fun little pictures, but it's a story about a dollhouse. Dolls of Hope. This is by Shirley Parenteau, and this is about the uh, friendship dolls that they did in um, the friendship dolls that arrived from America to Japan. So it's an interesting little kind of history story for the older reader. The Little Engine That Could. Now we all love that. I mean those are toys. Toys and clowns and fun stuffed animals and more toys and monkeys. And where's the little dollies? Each illustration, each one has a different kind of illustrator. I've got like three different the little engines that could, and each one is done differently a little bit. Oh, there's the dolly there. The, uh, she's got a little Indian doll, she's got a baby doll, but it's cute. There's always good illustrations in the little engine that could. Right, this is my favorite illustrator. I'm going to botch her name here. Nicoletta Sicolio. Um, she's in Italy. And this is the girl in the castle inside the museum. Now this isn't per se a doll, but her castle reminds me of the castle that's at our museum. And it's a dollhouse. 
And I love the illustrations and the toys. I mean, here you've got toys here. So it does pass, I guess, that way. And she's inside the castle. And she is my favorite illustrator. So if you ever get a chance to see some of her work, look for it. Some of it's a little avant-garde, kind of a little out there, but there's some really precious faces in it. Um, the last book that I have on here that is such a good read. I read this to my kids when they were young. I got it at a dollar store, and that's when the dollar stores used to have really good stuff, and they had gotten books in there. And this is by Dean Kuntz. It's The Oddkins. If you want a book about toys and ventriloquist dolls, mean dolls, good dolls, Happy creatures, robots. Let's see if we can find a good picture. And a hero, a group of heroes that are on a quest to make everything right. Read the Oddkins. There's some parts of it that are scary, but it is such a good book. And you know that when the ventriloquist dolls get involved, it gets scary. And there's a one that's called a stinger, and it's got a, it's a bee, and it's kind of going to sting you. But it is about, let's see, I'll tell you. To the world, the Oddkins are just stuffed animals. But all of these soft, cuddly, sweet-faced toys share a wonderful, magical secret. They're alive. Created by Mr. Bodkins, the old toy maker, the Oddkins are made only for very special children, those who must face something difficult in life and need a true friend. The Oddkins are given to these children to inspire them, help them, and love them as long as the children need them. But Mr. Bodkins passes away, and his... his um, he, he has not passed his mantle on to anyone, so the bad toys are trying to stop good toys from letting everything that Mr. Bodkins wanted to happen, happen. So it is really a good book. Um, can't get it for a dollar anymore, but um, if I had known that, I would have gotten tons of copies of this book. But it's really a good storybook. And it's long because it's supposed to be considered an adult book, not a kid's book. But it's a really good story. So I thought that this would be something different that we could talk about. Um, like I said, I like fantasy and I like ghost stories. Um, those are my favorite. So what are your genres of books that you like? And um, that's what we did today. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.